Hey Virgo, it's Empress Rose here. Welcome to your reading. These are general readings, so we take what works and leave what doesn't, as with everything in life. And if I don't catch your wavelength or storyline on this reading, just go check your other major placements, or even if I do catch it, you can might find something else interesting in your Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus signs. Uh, if you have your birth day, time, and time zone place, uh, there are many, many uh, websites that will help you um, figure out what those are if you don't know. And I'm going to try to post pictures of the spread at the end. So we're turning to our Oracle Mystical Moments for an intuitive start to the reading, and then we'll move to our, um, our regular tarot deck. Well, it's not the Rider Waite deck, which some people feel is like the deck, right? And it is the deck, and it has been for many times. But uh, for many, many periods of time, or a lot of time, it's been the deck. But there's always been a variety of decks uh, with this for as long as we've had this concept with this. All right, Virgo. And now there are a lot of decks, which I like, because I like the variety. That was too much! Oh my gosh, what just happened here? Boy, Virgo, you're just like a mix of Cancer and Leo energy. Oh, I haven't seen that card in a bit. Okay, hmm, things aren't going well. Okay, you have Queen Bee here. Um, this card, really, it I want it so badly to be some sort of Earth Mother Goddess card where it's all about sexuality and and, and um, pollination, and here she's got the fallopian tubes right here. This is why this card is specifically, to me, most of the cards are very gender neutral or gender fluid, they're, what, they're whatever, they're whatever person. And they, 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 they refer more to characteristics rather than actual genitalia. So, um, so but this card does refer to someone who presents as female. Um, and I think part of that is the fallopian tube uh, flowers here, but also, yeah. But anyway, I want her to be so badly. Every time I see this card, I want she's she looks happy, she looks content, she looks like she's just trying to help everybody pollinate. Maybe she's a matchmaker here. She's got this big flowy dress, but I can never get over the fact that she's a queen bee. She's stingers. She might be a bucket of honey, but she's also an army of stingers and zingers and pain. And there's something here that's painful about this person. They may be just defending themselves. In their mind, they're just defending themselves, protecting themselves. But in your mind and possibly a lot of other people's minds, they're just hurtful, you know? But the way they've got it up here, they're just defending themselves. But they may be actively hurting a lot of people, sending out their... You know, is this the type of queen bee that just stings if, if when threatened? Or is this the type of queen bee that stings at any perceived threat near or far? Is this the type of queen bee that just has killer bees go out and swarm everybody, you know? So the queen bee, you know, she's that crazy one from... That crazy one who, who is popular via fear and nobody actually likes, um, and they know that. And, and it causes even more insecurity and the cycle continues. So... This energy is not good. It's a honey, yeah, but you gotta deal with some stingers to get that. And then we're gonna move on to the other bad news. The other bad news, I swear, Virgo, it does get better, right? It is gonna get better. Oh. <laughs> um, <and laughs> cool. Okay. So this is stranded, feeling stuck, feeling trapped. Um, this is. Oh, this actually reminded me of, of an experience I had on a beach a couple weeks ago with a boat that ran aground and the same sort of rainbow cloud was in the background, um, sort of sun dog thing. Um, so you ran, a, you ran aground, you thought you knew what you were doing, you thought you knew where you were going and either inexperience or something, you didn't pay attention in class, something happened and my goodness you were learning a lesson. What this looked like 
is this might have looked like land. See, I have this complex scenario for how this happened. This, uh, this flood came, buried everything in water, so I guess that's drowning everything and flooding. And then you saw this, this top here and you thought, oh, land, I'm going to land there. But it turned out to be a tree, and as the water just kept receding and receding and receding, you realized the error of your ways, and now there's not a clear exit strategy. Yep, you don't have an exit strategy. You feel stranded and maybe you even feel abandoned. You thought help would have come by now. You thought there'd be some way out. Someone would have helped you. Next time, for sure, you're going to pay better attention in sailing class. You're probably not going to start off with a big giant ship. You're going to start off a little slower, a little quieter. You're going to do an internship first. But for now, you feel stuck. You feel stranded. You don't know how to get things moving forward. You don't know how to move forward. Um, and then <laughs> you don't know how to move forward. And here you are, you drowned, and you are now a sea witch. You are um, fully immersed in some sort of emotional uh, issue, having it connects a little bit to your self-esteem. You uh, have your propeller, so maybe you're moving on to, um, to container ships now. And you're, you've got this propeller, you want to go somewhere, but it's just playing. You're not really going anywhere. This is another, another, this is a little bit of the vibe of Stranded, just not going anywhere. Here something happened, you didn't navigate a turn very well, and now you're stuck in a tree. Uh, you're, you're not necessarily at fault for the overall environment issue, but you are at fault for uh, navigating, poor navigation. And uh, this is um, this is the sea witch now, and she's not going anywhere either. But she's dreaming about it. She's pretending. She's practicing. She's rehearsing. She would like to go somewhere, and she doesn't understand why she can't yet. We're all looking at her like, because you're a little girl. You're a little girl. You're not going to be like uh, managing a giant container ship at this age and stage. But that's what she wants. That's what she's dreaming about. And but there is something where she has practiced and rehearsed enough, like she has a little friend with her, and she's very committed to this process. She's very committed to going somewhere, even though she's stranded and stuck. She wants to go somewhere, um, but she doesn't have the right tools yet. She doesn't have the right ability, and there might be even something in her subconscious about self-worth issues where she's not sure she's worthy to go yet. She thinks she's worthy, but something in her subconscious is a little bit questioning that. Um, and that could be part of what's holding her back, is her own sense of unworthiness. But she's prepared to go somewhere, she's ready, she's committed to it, um, and she's getting a little frustrated. Of course, stranded in Sea Witch, we're getting a little frustrated, we're stuck, and we don't want to be here, we want to be moving, we wanted to be moving, and now, and everything's just kind of jammed in a... Whew, but uh, here's here's... Here's a uh, redirection, we're going to call this card. Redirection. Um, so you thought, again, it was you thought you were going somewhere. You thought this was a good idea. This all looked like such a great idea. You thought it was really going to go the distance. It looked like a hot air balloon. Yeah, you need the wind to come. But the very thing you needed came. And instead of transporting you, moving you, getting things going here like you want, it blew everything apart. Now, to the outside observer, or, or to God, or to spirit, this looks like inevitable. This thing was designed to blow apart. In fact, that's its job, is to completely fall apart. Just because it was mistaken as um, a mode of transportation, because it kind of had some of the similar, similar things as a mode of transportation, just because it got mistaken for that, doesn't mean it was that. But now you've grabbed onto something. You've grabbed onto this seed. And, um, and that seed is exactly what is supposed to happen. So it's not that you were never supposed to get there and this was never supposed to happen and this was never supposed to fall apart. It's that you didn't understand that, that this was a stepping stone to the real plan, that this was just part of getting there, part of the process of getting you into the air and getting you into this in position to grab this actual real opportunity involved Maybe the universe tricking you a little bit into a path that um, didn't look good, that didn't actually work out. But it wasn't meant to work out. That's what spirit knows. That's what the cards know. You didn't know that, so you might be a little panicked. It wasn't meant to work out, um, and now you're in the right position. Now you're where you need to be. But what I like I'm seeing here is... Um, is we've got wind, we've got spirit responsible for quite a bit, things outside of our control. There's a lot of surrender happening here. Here you're frustrated and here 
you're um, thinking you're taking um, advantage of an opportunity that's presented itself and that's what you're supposed to be doing so you may be going from a place of, of sitting here in frustration and stranded right into an opportunity um, to take advantage and it's spirit that's made this happen there's been a need for surrender and uh, allowing spirit to take over and do what needs to be done here to get you into position for the right thing that you were meant to do and this isn't to say there won't be a new redirection further down the line i feel like most of my life has been a series of redirections <laughs> so um so uh and uh, and so that I no longer have any certainty that this balloon actually is a balloon. I'm pretty sure it's a trick to get me where I need to go. So, um, so yeah, so, but, but spirit's been here moving things and, and, and has put you in situations of frustration, of fear, um, of not knowing what to do and panic. Uh, but you are grabbing onto something real. So here you're grabbing onto some, this is a similar thing. This is you grabbing onto this thing. It's not real. It's not real, but here in this one, we see you finally grabbing onto the real thing, the real propeller that's actually meant to take you someplace. Does it look as grand as this one? Possibly not, possibly not. Uh, but it is It is still gonna, it's, it's where you need to be and you're in position now. So um, this wasn't real and this isn't real. And here you are getting frustrated. When do I get the real one? Well, you might need some ingenuity and you might need to grab for it. This is like a bunch of my favorite cards, like my, not my favorite as in like, oh yay, everything's coming up roses for you. But my favorite as in like, I love the messages in all of these cards. I think they've got some really cool messages. So there's a lot of um, surrender to spirit, not having quite the tools, having tools that weren't actually the right tools before. Now, now finally, this very, we've got this whole thing of ug 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 oh my gosh and then right here you like right at the very end of this whole string of cards this whole string of of not so great not very fabulous cards uh pain uh needing to endure pain in order to get what you wanted um being feeling stranded and abandoned um feeling uh tired of practicing tired of waiting frustrated and then um, panic, and then and then right at the end of this whole thing, we've got like and leap right at the end. It's like a, a surprise twist ending. I like it. Satisfies sort of the storyteller in me that likes a nice little twist at the end. I mean, the twist has to be somewhat. It has to be realistic and it has to be marginally predictable. Like it's something that did cross your mind, but you didn't think that was actually going to happen. That's a good twist, in my opinion. All right, Virgo, past, present, inner landscape, what's at issue, your environment, your to-do list, and your possible outcome. This is one of those readings where tarot is just tickling me, tickling my, my sense of humor, my funny bone here. In your recent past, you have the King of Cups. So this is a very mature um, emotional offering, a very mature Zen-like ability to this is probably someone, it could be you, it could be someone in your environment. It's a court card, so we're talking about an energy that somebody brings to a situation. A lot of emotional maturity, uh, an ability to listen to their emotions and their feelings and have them be part of their guidance system and not suppressing, not uh, being a slave to their emotions, but also not suppressing them and dictating what emotions any situation is going to, is appropriate. Um, but they're listening to their emotions and they're taking them and they're understanding them. And there's a lot of emotional maturity here and there may have been an offer of, of love and affection uh, based out of that uh, emotional maturity with an eye towards the future. In your current situation, you have High Priestess and this one makes me chuckle because this one is typically hiding this. This is like, she's like, you can't see. The book is closed, all information lies within now. Uh, there's, this is no longer an open book test. You either know it or you don't write me the essay. Um, but sh the book's closed. You don't get, and this is not an open book test. This is, she doesn't want you to know, and there's a reason why she doesn't want you to know. She doesn't want you to know because if you did know, you would fuck it up. You wouldn't go where you wanted to go. You wouldn't do the things you, the work that needs to be done. This, she is, I have such a hard time conveying this like concept. 
the path creates the destination. That's like saying, it's like, it's like you, ha she wants you to drive from LA to New York. She wants you to drive there. But as you're driving, you create New York. New York doesn't exist until you drive to it. And there's something about that drive that creates the destination, right? So if it was, if that was the case, it's not just that she wants you to stop by, you know, she wants you down Route 66. She wants you to see this site. She wants you to see, it's not just that. That's why you're not flying. So it is that there's stuff along the way that you need to see that if you just flew to New York, you wouldn't see the things you need to see. But it's not only that, it's that the path there creates the end result. But it's a lot like this. This is what she. This is what you're not seeing. This is a little bit of what she's hiding. This is a little bit of of something that looks like the right path isn't the right path, but it positions you. So if you knew that you were gonna end up wherever the seed lands, would you just walk there? Maybe. But would you end up in the same place? Would you have had the same? I'm spitting here. Would you have had the same experience? I don't know. So this looks this looks good. This looks good, but you've got to trust your intuition when the shit hits the fan, and you've got to grab onto that, um, grab onto that rescue. Look at it. This propeller. It's like so much the same. The dandelion and the propeller here. Um, so that's a little bit of where you're at right now. Books closed. You got to figure it out. If you don't, you got to figure it out. She can't tell you because you'll mess it up. So you've got to figure out your own path and how you're getting where you want to go. That's where you're at right now. What you're worried about is conflict. You're worried about creating a lot of conflict, possibly in your community, possibly with your loved ones. What, what you want to do, something about conflict is on your mind. You don't want to create conflict. Could be with this queen bee energy. You don't want to create the conflict. You don't want, um, you don't want to deal with it. Someone else got this recently too. This five of wands is conflict. Uh, it might be just sparring. You don't want to do this. This is, or maybe you do. Maybe you need to have it out with somebody. And so it's your hopes and fears column. So it could be both. You're hoping to have it out with someone, but you don't want to create conflict with somebody else. Or you don't want to create conflict, but also you know that you kind of have to have it out with someone and you have to, um, you know, openly spar with somebody. This isn't like trying to kill each other. These are teenage boys, like, uh, testing their strength. Um, so maybe that's a little bit of what's going on for you too. You're worried about, you're worried you're not up to the task. You're worried about uh, your strength being tested and you not being strong enough for this. Um, but whatever it is, conflict is on your mind. You either, you might feel the need to engage in conflict or that it's coming up for you and you might be very worried about it and sort of maybe planning out um, how you're going to deal with it and what you're going to say. And that kind of thing. Um, what's an issue here? This is fascinating because this is also, no, nope, never mind. This is the three of wands, not the two of wands. So the three of wands in the upright, he's got a lot of faith. The sun is rising. He's out here. His ships are coming in. His ship's coming in. Uh, he thinks it's actually stuck in a tree. No, that's what you're worried about. Um, so it's in the reverse. So you might be having a moment of faithlessness. You have no faith. You have no, no faith that the good things are going to happen, that those ships are coming in, that the sun is going to rise, despite the sun having risen every single day of your entire life, you're still doubting that it will rise. And so you're just having this crisis of faith and these doubts. You don't trust your intuition. You don't trust what lies ahead. You don't believe that what you're going to get there or that um, it can ever happen that way, or you don't think you're ever going to get there. The Three of Wands upright is a, is a card of faith, and in the reverse, it's a, it's a lack of faith. It's a lack of trust, a lack of faith, maybe even a lack of surrender. We were talking about that earlier. It's a lot of needing to surrender to some of these situations that you're very much out of control out of a lot of this. Um, a lot of this timing-wise has to do with spirit, and the way spirit wants to move and what spirit wants to do. We're also getting that with the High Priestess card, the spiritual, it's highly spiritual card. We're talking about spirit uh, wanting to move and you needing to surrender to it. And you may not ha be having faith that spirit has your best interests at heart, that this is going to go, that you're ever going to land. You know, you may have grabbed this in a panic, not even believing, not even understanding that this is the real thing. Uh, this is this is the one, you know, at the end. I don't know where you are on this timeline. You may be yet to grab onto that seed, the real seed. But you may be having faith. You may still be here uh, freaking out. You have yet to come up with the plan. You can't see the plan. Uh, your lack of faith actually prevents you from seeing the plan. 
Your lack of faith actually prevents you, it would prevent, these people don't have any faith. This is the plan. We had a plan. We had a plan. We're going to stick with the plan. You uh, are, to ha are having this faith. It takes a lot of faith to reach for something unfamiliar like that um, as it falls apart. This, a lot of faith that someday it's going to be real. Someday you're actually going to uh, do that cargo ship. You're going to be in charge of that cargo ship. And for now, you're stuck practicing. So there is some level of faith that's been, in, that, that's been needed in all of these things. And it looks like you are having a crisis of faith. This is getting to be a long reading, but it's not. We got a lot of cards, and there was a lot to say, and they were my favorites, and I wanted to spend some time with them. Okay, we have a King of Cups, and then now in your environment, we have a King of Pentacles. So again, this can be male or female. Um, this King of Pentacles, he. This is someone, possibly a real person in your environment. They have what they need. They have their money. It's been slow moving. They've earned what they've got. They, um, I don't know if a king, I mean, a king works hard, but do they earn all of that? I don't know. Um, so the king here, um, he's got his kingdom. He's got enough stored away for the whole kingdom for the winter. Um, he's very careful, very cautious with his money, with his time, with his energy. He only puts it into things that he knows are going to have a good return. This is bonds, not stocks. This, this is a man of stocks. Not stocks. This is a man of bonds on stocks. This is a man of, um, he likes his slow growth. Uh, he likes his plodding, plodding movement. Um, and this is either an energy around you, most likely a person around you, likes, likes the slow pace, likes to pace things out, uh, is, is wealthy possibly, has what they need. Um, uh, a visionary, not, not the charismatic visionary like the King of Wands, but but a, a visionary like, like the Wall of China visionary, like we're going to build this stone by stone and it's going to take 300 years. Um, that kind of visionary, not the kind of visionary of like, let's slap that baby up. That'll be fun. That'll be cool. I think we can open in six months. Not that kind of visionary, which is more the King of Wands. Um, and then but here we have the Queen of Wands. This is your to-do list. Can you see your to-do list here? Mm. She's got, she's intuition, opening up your intuition, strength, fortitude. She's got the intuition. She's got, uh, her third eye is wide open. She's very spiritual. She's very calm. This is the energy you're coming into. Or maybe you need to do the king, the queen of wands here. I don't know. But this is the, this is the energy that she, that, that you're coming into. The person you're becoming is much, much very calm, very, again, visionary, has a lot of faith, has a lot of courage, um, can is following their intuition, um, seeing maybe a little bit into the future. She's got some witchy vibes here. She's got her little, oh look, she's got a little black cat and um, we've got a little, little fishy here. She's got her little familiar companion. So I'm not saying you have to get a pet, but um, it doesn't hurt usually. So um, Queen of Wands here. Uh, her that's the energy you're coming into or or someone you need to seek out someone you need to find uh, they might have some guidance for you but that's your to-do list this is queen of wands energy becoming or um, seeking out someone with those qualities that intuitiveness I think it might be you I think you need to to open up that third eye that intuitive understanding coming into strength and vision your possible outcome I want to say this comes as a warning or this could come as a warning to you that if you're not going to come into your intuition, if you're not going to, oh yeah, you're coming into your intuition here because you're having a crisis of faith. So this woman has a huge amount of faith. She can see the future. She sees it. So maybe you need to start visualizing the things that you don't believe that can happen, that you don't think that can happen. She sees it. She sees it. She knows that it's happening. She, so this, she is a... This reverse three of wands is a lack of faith. This is a faith-filled person here. This is, they, they have visions and they believe in them. And they can see them unfolding before they unfold in reality. So, and this is the three of swords. So this is a possible outcome or a possible place that you're going. This is a quick moving heartache. A lot of truth coming in, a lot of understanding, a lot of um, truth, maybe words, uh, maybe some hurtful words. This queen bee energy reminds me of some stingers piercing the heart. 
maybe some hurt, some hurtful words, or um, just a fast moving heartbreak. It's going to come in like a storm. It's going to come in and it's going to leave really quick too. So uh, there could just be some heartache coming in for you. Or if you don't come into this faith, this this position of, of intuition and faith in your intuition, um, if you don't come into that energy, you could be causing yourself some heartbreak. Um, but this sounds like maybe some truths are revealed uh, that could be a little painful, but you'll you'll be getting over it. This isn't the Ten of Swords. This is the Three of Swords. So and Ten of Swords references a very long, painful period. This is a very short, painful period with some some immediate heartbreak um, that is 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 healed um, and and passes like a storm. All right. So that was a very long reading, Virgo. Thanks for sticking with me if you did. Um, I hope that that was helpful for you. It was fun and fascinating for me, a very engaging reading for me. So I hope that uh, you enjoyed that as well. So thank you so much for your likes and your comments and your subscribes. I really, really appreciate that.